In this part of the project, we'll be wrapping up our project by simply adding highlights and the final touches to bring our project to a close. Let's get started. Okay, so now we're at the end of the project. So we're just gonna go ahead and start to work on the highlights and we make a new layer. We'll start off with a few little details. Um, we're gonna get macro, micro actually, and then jump back to macro and then go back to micro again. So I just wanna create the ridge of the nose here, just using a very thin brush, uh, just a basic flat brush. And my opacity is at 100 and my floor is at 100 also. But I just want to create those little details. I'm not doing anything big here just yet. Just testing the waters, uh, cleaning up a couple areas. So when we merge things or when I lay textures down, we lose some of the details. So now I want to go back and punch those in. So I can, I can see that I'm losing the eye. So I want to just hit the eye with a nice light color. There we go. Let's do that throughout and just push this a little bit. Same on this side and keep that wet look so the eyes don't get lost and everything else, all the other details. So I'm still on the flat brush here. And here we go. Some of these areas are getting lost too, so I'm going to go in and clean up the eyes. A little lighter. And notice throughout my painting, I never go completely dark with black or I never go completely white. That's a nice trick to always remember. So you always, if you go white, if you go to 100% white, you have no place else to go. If you stay, let's say 80%, 85%, even 90, you can still go higher if you really want to push something or give it a sparkle. So even with the teeth, you can see I'm still not at white. I'm at a brown, beige, very probably 85%. But as I add it to the teeth, it's certainly gives those highlights that I want. And it pushes and pulls and pops out those articles based on the colors that we're using, right? So this is working pretty well for me. All right, just clean up those teeth a little bit. And now I need to take some of that into the mouth area. Um, so we need to pick a different color. And I can see, undo that, I can see here that a little bit of my textures from earlier have hopped into the chin. Right, so you look down, you can see that. But we're going to use that to our advantage. So that's going to be a happy accident. And right now I'm just creating those ridges in the lips to show the full shape. And then we'll jump right back to the highlights for it. There we go. Jump on both sides and taper it in. And just use this to keep the form and to show the details in the mouth. So here I can see there, I don't want to keep those textures there. I that's a mistake, so we're just going to clean it up with some paint. And then we'll use the highlights later on to take care of that. Now, on the left-hand side, I don't mind the textures dropping in as much, so we're okay there. Let's work on the top of the head. I don't want to stay in one area. And we're going to go ahead and turn this into, uh, let's use a light layer. So let's see which one. I don't want to use overlay. Yeah, linear dodge will be perfect for it. And we're just going to hop around and touch only the highlights. I don't want this everywhere. I just want the highest points to receive it. And this way, this helps us create the illusion of depth and texture. And you can see as we built up over the last couple videos, you can see now how everything's becoming one solidified piece. It's not um, a bunch of different paintings thrown together. It feels like one piece. Let me undo that. There we go. And so now I want to pop these textures, these uh, scales or whatever you would call them off of everything else. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of a rim light, a little highlight there. That's working. I wanted to take a step back to make sure it wasn't too bright, but I feel like it's not the brightest thing there, so we can use it. And we're going to go to my favorite brush for this project, which is my chalk brush. And just add some corners and edges here and just keep moving around and making sure that I'm not just sitting in one area and trying to get one piece perfect, but really just bouncing around in this area from top to bottom to side, middle again. This way I can get one cohesive look and everything makes sense. And I really like the way this is playing out. I remember when we laid the 
orange to pale texture down. That's really helping this out to keep it from being so flat. So now we're going to bring some of that color down here into the nose area and add a little bit of the rim light here. This is good and really start to work that mouth and pop it out, pop the lip out so it doesn't get lost. Here we go. There we go. This is, yeah. Now, initially, I'm just going to go and touch it a little bit. Most of the highlights, we're just going to touch a little bit, but then I'll come back and I'll really lay some paint down. But I want to get the form first. So we just want to bring it into the lips. We're going to slide down a little bit. Keep that color all throughout the entire project. So it's not just in the top, but it translates to the bottom too. Now, here are those scales we had, those happy accidents. We're going to paint into them and incorporate them into the chin. And I think we'll be okay. We can get a right way with that. And just keep working the lips. There we go. Just quick, really quick wispy lines here. I'm just helping to separate the mouth from the shoulder. And we're really using the same technique we use with the teeth. Nothing more, nothing less. Just really implementing that technique into this entire area. So we're going to highlight the edges. Make sure that we keep it looking a little bit of wet, I guess is the word we we'll use for that. Take a look. It's looking pretty good. I want to work these curves. They're looking a little flat, so we'll bring some highlights there. And I'll do this entire area now while I'm here. There we go. Let's quickly run through that. Here we go. Some of those shapes were getting lost and it was starting to look a little flat. So this is good. This is a good fix for us. Make sure we're popping those curves out. There we go. Here we go. So just to keep pushing and looking for those little things that can accentuate a character. So here's the wrinkles from the brow here. And then we'll go back into the the lid, same thing here. And if you notice, you can see that the eyes starting to get lost in the background. So what we'll do is drop down and give a nice little highlight to the membrane of the eye. So let's go right here and give a nice little loop. There we go. That certainly separates it nice and clean. Looks good there. And just continue to work our way up. So this part's getting a little muddy, so we're going to use the highlights here to help separate. There we go. Let's go in and just here and there too. I'm just trying to bounce around in this area and make sure that things look good. This also helps hide the textures that we have. Um, it incorporates them into the actual painting. So now let's go ahead and just create an edge. Rim, rim lighting for the edge of this bust, this character bust. There we go. Let's have the light wrap around. And you can see that texture brush is, brush is still coming in handy. So now I can add a lot more paint. And I'm sure of the direction we're going, so now I can hit it pretty heavy and pretty hard. There we go. There we go. And now we're just kind of popping this thing right off, right off the paper now. Go in a little bit on the mouth and the chin area again. Catch some light underneath. And let's carry this up top into the nose area and back into the forehead. Let's look at that. And uh, the top part looks pretty good, so let's add a little edge lighting to it. We can hit this with a, this is a little more yellow than white, so this is fine as a secondary light choice. And now let's right here on the edges. So I really love this chalk brush. Um, it's just a really helpful brush. Now I'm not pressing as hard. I'm just going around and adding a little bit of color and 
separating the shapes. And you can see the purples and the pinks and the browns and the greens that are there. Um, and that was the goal. Remember when we first started talking, we talked about those fluorescent colors. So I think we certainly hit that mark. We got some really good highlights here. Just touch on it a little bit. I don't want to spend too much time. You know, that's something I can pull to the side later on and polish even more. But for right now, I think we're doing okay. And I'm uh, just looking to see how this thing is turning out. A couple areas I want to work a little bit more. So let's go ahead and let's make a little bit of spit, some type of saliva. It's going to come from the mouth and drop down. Give our painting a little more personality. Here we go. Now, most times, I'll, I'll admit this, most times when you're doing creatures, you go with darker colors. But I wanted to do something different. And uh, I like the direction that this uh, ended up going in. It's really nice. So... Just want to touch and bring this all the way through so it's not just in one area. And you know, that's a little blotchy there, so I want to go in and break that up some. And so here we go. Just looking for areas I need to polish and clean up. Here we go. And just looking at this area primarily, I can see that that mouth needed a little more work there. So, that's much better, much better. I want to highlight this area here, just to where the lips and the curves happen. Here we go. And I can probably turn that into blue or, you know, but I think for what it is, it works. Probably turn the opacity down even. Uh, I just want to show it catching a little bit of light. And I feel like collectively this is okay. It feels good. Um, so I'm happy with this project. And thanks uh, for sticking around and checking this out. I hope you find that these techniques work for you and that you can produce some really cool artwork with this. So if you happen to have any questions about anything that I did, feel free to send me an email or to IM me on Facebook. I'd be more than happy to answer your questions. And I'd love to see what your final projects look like. So thank you for sticking around through this tutorial and best of luck.